Office of Environmental Affairs under its Urban Self-Help Program for the Twin City Rail Trail. Mr. Casasa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Some of you may recall, counselors, that uh, the city has been pursuing with the city of Lemonster as part of a partnership, an effort to uh, acquire the 4.2 mile abandoned rail trail that runs parallel to uh, Water Street or Route 12 for the last uh, year or two. And as part of that effort, um, we were able to receive a commitment in federal highway transportation funding through Congressman Over's office of approximately a million dollars toward the potential acquisition of that uh, corridor. In addition, um, the two cities applied for a half million dollars, $250,000 each, under the Urban Self-Help Program through the state to bring the total available for the trail to approximately one and a half million dollars. Um, we have since had an appraisal done of the trail uh, that came out at a million and a half. Um, we, knew, we knew about that before we applied for the funding, so it wasn't just a coincidence. Um, and we are now in the process of negotiating with uh, CSX Corporation, which owns that line and is interested in selling it to the two cities. So in, in accepting and appropriating these funds, we will have them available for acquisition, um, which, according to the terms and conditions of the grant, would have to take place uh, sometime next spring. Councilor Caddy. How wide is that uh, rails? The corridor itself varies quite a bit in width um, through its length. All right, it, what's, it's, what's the narrowest it could be? About 30 feet. Now, for the trail itself, you really only need approximately 12 feet. Um, and we would have to declare a portion of the trail parkland. Um, but we would like to be able to declare only the section that's necessary for the trail as parkland and be able to use any additional land in the areas where it's widest. It goes as wide as uh, 70, 80 feet for ancillary uses. Cities would be able to lease. Some of that is currently being leased, in fact, by CSX, mostly in Lemonster. But there are areas that we might potentially be able to uh, lease or sell to others. To recover some of the funding? Yes. Um, I mean, I've thought about the land has absolutely no usefulness other than a bike trip. I mean, you couldn't develop a piece of land in a straight line like that. So they really have us over the barrel. I mean, we have to pay what they think it's worth. Well, they don't have, on the other hand, they don't have much of an alternative. Okay, so in other words, if they, their only alternative is to, uh, instead of rail banking the car, which is what they'd be doing by selling to us, to the two cities, they would be, under federal law, they would be preserving for the potential in the future of if, if 40, 50, 60 years down the road, all of a sudden they decided, gee, we really need to reinstitute rail service here because it would serve the greater good. They can buy that back from the two cities. And their only alternative is not to sell, if they don't sell to the two cities, their only alternative is to either just continue owning an abandoned rail line, which they're not interested in doing, or to parcel out and sell to a butters. And the cost of doing that, because the, the deeds and easements associated with this thing go, go back decades and decades, the cost of trying to do that and sell to a butters, I'm gonna sell you 20 feet of, my, of the car in your backyard, would be so expensive that it really wouldn't give them much of an alternative. So they have us over a barrel and we have them over a barrel. But, but they reserve the right to buy it back. But do they? Are they going to allow us to piece the property out and sell it? We, I, we may not be able to sell. We may only be able to lease it. That would make more sense, I would think. In any event, it's a good project. Would they be... Councilor Hay? Sorry. It's a great project and, and something I look forward to, but my question is, 
if we're the only, if the two cities are the only bidders and the seller has no other bidders and no other use for this property, why are we giving them a million and a half dollars? We would have we negotiated we would give this? them the fair market value of that corridor based on an appraisal or appraisal. Right. But the, the, the appraisal is, is, is based on doing exactly what you just said, which is selling off all those little parcels to the abutters because that's the only way to sell it. Because nobody's going to buy the whole tract, the whole length of it, for development in any way. And if so if it's been appraised at that one and a half million dollars to sell it that way by parceling it out to all of those individual abutters, which takes an incredible amount of work, an incredible amount of lawyer time, which is billable hours, cha-ching, cha-ching. Um, I just think we should negotiate down as far as we can. We absolutely are trying to do that, Counselor. In fact, um, <coughs> That's been our argument, essentially. Um, <coughs> however, in this world of appraisals, you can get two highly qualified appraisers, look at the same corridor, and come up with widely divergent opinions of value. And our one and a half million is the low end of that scale. And that's, that's one of the issues in negotiation right now. But the appraisers that do, did these appraisals, the one that we hired, has extensive experience in working for MBTA and for other uh, uh, rail corridor acquisitions as a particular science to assessing the potential value of a corridor. Yes, we're only proposing to use it for recreational purposes, and our argument is, you know, you can't evaluate it based on more than, you can either base it on the at the fence value, it's called. In other words, what it would be worth at over the fence. If, if you owned, at the back, back of your backyard of your property was at the end of the rail line. You can either so so if your total land area is worth a dollar a square foot, then that land should be worth a dollar a square foot. But their appraisers have a different perspective, and they think there are easement values for potential placement of utilities, because you can put a utility 4.2 miles long for potential fiber optic uses or other uses. But but in doing that, you would be impairing the ability of the at the fence value user to be able to build a a building or some structure on that property. So there are a lot of issues that we're getting into in this negotiation. And we're, we're, we're taking up the perspective that based on our, some of the arguments you made, it's not worth more than that. Both city assessors have looked at it and come up with the opinion that it, in fact, may be worth a little bit less than a million and a half. And that we only have that amount anyway. And with this grant, if we, don't, if, if we don't, if they don't agree with us and come to a quick sale, it goes away and they're stuck holding the land. I'm, I'm certainly going to vote for the order this evening because um, it's to accept, you know, a grant, um, which uh, I'll be glad to do. But I just wanted to make sure that people were being diligent in their uh, negotiations regarding the piece of land. That's all. Thank you. Councilor Boyve. Yeah, uh, the only only question I have is, uh, if they were to, if C CRX, whatever the name of it is, were to uh, uh, sell those parcels off to the abutters, would they retain the right to buy them back? No, no. They can't. So it is actually to their advantage to sell it to the Twin Cities uh, in case some sometime down the road they want to uh, uh, put a new, another rail line in, they have the right to purchase that land back. It, it certainly would be, and it's certainly in their best interest. It, so the whole thing is really in their best interest. Yes. The only problem with them seeing their best interest is that it's a very, very large corporation with holdings all across the country. Oh, I understand that. And they don't, they're not necessarily a motivated seller. So they can take a hard stance with us, with the attitude of, well, we'll sit on it for another five years, and if you're interested, come back and see us. Right. So, so there's always two sides to a negotiating. <coughs> That's what we're dealing with. Not motivated. Councilor Joseph. <laughs> Just having uh, quite a length of this in my ward, um, this is money well spent. Peace of mind for a lot of people that are currently living along that abandoned area. 
because there are things that happen along that abandoned corridor that really shouldn't be happening. Um, with the rail trail there, that should eliminate some of the problems of people living in that area, people dumping in that area, that area just being overgrown. People are camping on that rail, on that um, abandoned track now. There's all kinds of problems that are being caused in that neighborhood or in those neighborhoods. The Salvation Army, the stuff that they have in their boxes, I've seen it all thrown all along the tracks down there, uh, mattresses down there. Um, the people that abut it use it as, as a trash area. So uh, to me, it's money that'll be well spent just to give peace of mind to the abutters in that area along uh, Falula Street and in the back over there. Once, once the million and a half or once whatever money is negotiated is to purchase the property, where would the additional money come from to develop the rail trail? It would have to be in subsequent uh, applications for funding, either through the same program, which is usually funded annually. Okay. And they've often, um, as they did with Doyle Field Maverick recently, um, will fund a project through several phases until it's completed. Um, we can also attempt through the congressman to try to see if we can get further highway transportation funding. And then there's the TIP as well, um, which of course is a competitive process. Um, but but uh, uh, that's essentially, you know, we were hoping that we would be able to work an acquisition for less than that and use the balance of funds to start the construction process. Uh, but uh, no, I think it'd be a great project, and I, I hope we move forward rapidly on it. Councilor Caddy? Barry, I would just remind them of the, their big corporation, like you said, but this piece of property is a liability for them. If somebody were to get hurt on those lines, I would think that the, live, the, the lawsuits, that has to help in our favor for negotiation purposes, I would think. Well, we're hoping that we can bring them to the table in good faith. And if, if we're unable to work something out in the very near future, rather than lose this $250,000, we're going to try to look at alternative ways of spending that money and proposing something else to the state and look at whether or not if they abandon their rights to preserve that, that back in the corridor, whether the city has the right to be taxing them for that land or even proceeding with an eminent domain. So there's still a few options that we may have if they don't want to work with us. I guess we're asking you too many questions. <laughs> Thank you. You better my answers are too long. <laughs> Council President Donnelly has joined us. Order 349-05 be adopted. Second. Motion made and seconded to adopt Order 349-05. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Order 350-05, transfer $145,000 from CDBG Year 29 Housing Rehabilitation in Hoop to CDBG Year 28 Crocker Field Improvements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> this requested appropriation is for the transfer of funding that is two plus years old that the city has not expended in the housing program in large part uh, because of the fact that um, we have received a significant amount of program income into that fund through uh, refinancing because interest rates have been low and through sales of properties in the area. At the time that we originally requested that appropriation, it appeared as though there would be a demand for those funds. That demand did not materialize. At the same time, a year later, uh, or a year earlier, we had set aside $65,000 in CDBG funding for the Crocker Field Restoration Project, subject to a match by the schools of $65,000 to begin addressing the deteriorated fence around Crocker Field. Um, <clears throat> that match was, was reached last year, uh, largely through the efforts of the Crocker Field Restoration Committee. Um, Mr. Lenny Laxo was the chair of that committee and spent a lot of hours trying to raise those funds and to work with us in getting this project uh, off uh, ground um, is here to answer any questions you might have about the project as well and about their efforts. Uh, we attempted to bid the project with the funds that we had last year. Um, 
and found that the bids have come in significantly higher than the engineer and architect's estimates for that. And we've since consulted with them um, and gotten more information from some of the prospective bidders. And we feel as though our best option at this point is to bid the entire project with one contractor for uniformity of quality. Um, and these additional funds would enable us, we believe, to be able to do the entire project from river to broad to circle streets, replacing sections of the fence that are badly deteriorated and trying to match them in kind with uh, the same, the same type of, the same color and the same uh, texture as the existing fence um, so that it will restore its historic appearance. And at the same time, the steel part of the fence would be removed during that process, taken to a factory where it would be stripped and then resealed and waterproofed before it was reinstalled. Councilor Hay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just uh, like to say that uh, all of us should be thankful for Mr. Laxo and, and his uh, committee and the hard work that they put into um, renovating Crawford Field. Um, it's a great facility and it's uh, something the city should be proud of. And Lenny and a, and a group of people have, have worked very hard and very diligent to, uh, been very diligent to, to make this project go. And this is just one more step to uh, aid them and uh, I'm thankful for their efforts. Thank you. For sure, Councilor. Councilor Joseph. I guess I'm thankful that the <coughs> Crocker Field Improvement Fund is going to benefit from these funds, okay? Um, as I've said in the past, there's got to be something wrong with the housing rehab and hoop program if it's allowed to give out this type of money continuously. Because, I mean, this is the second time in the four years that I've been here that we've taken money out of that program to put into another program after the fact. Now, like I said, I, I'm, perf I'm ecstatic that it's going to the Crocker Field improvements, but there's got to be something, I mean, there's got to be people out there that are in need of better insulation, uh, better furnaces, uh, better, all the improvements, they can't afford them right now, especially with the home, with the heating fuel costs that they're going to have this year that these funds are really designated to going to that we must be advertising it wrong or not opening it up to enough people or not opening up to the right people but there's got to be some kind of a communications problem in the rehab and who program if this kind of money is able to come out of that program on a biannual or twice every two years, we seem to pull that kind of money out of that program. Well, Councillor, um, in the early years of the CDBG program, um, annually, the city used to commit as much as a quarter million, three hundred thousand dollars each year to the housing revolving fund with the philosophy that it would reach a level of funding whereby the amount of loan payments that were coming in would sustain the fund, it would truly be a revolving fund, it would be unnecessary for us to come back to council except once in a long while to request additional funding. And it has by and large worked that way. But what we didn't anticipate when we requested these funds in year 29 was that interest rates were going to drop as low as they did and that all of a sudden everybody would be either selling or getting loans and we were getting lump sum payments instead of getting $75 a month or $150 a month from, from someone we're getting a $25,000, $50,000 loan payoff. And that's really why this money hasn't gone okay. spent. Thank you. Move the 350-05 be adopted. Second. Motion made and seconded to adopt order 350-05. Councilor Di Natale. Thank you. I just had, had one question. L Lenny, is this is there, a, is there a balance in the restoration fund right now beyond the 145? Although that's not really in that fund, but do we have, do you have monies that you've raised exclusive of this, or is this, is this it? Yeah. Um, well, with the committee hired the engineer to do the work. Um, so we paid him last year about $12,000, the actual design work, and then we're gonna to have to pay him another $10,000 or so for 
construction phase services, so we're committed to that amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, we're still getting donations every every week. So beyond what we've committed to the fence project and to uh, just keeping the, the field in decent planning shape, we probably have about $20,000 uh, as a balance. Okay. I, I think this is great, but you know what? It, it just highlights the fact that we need to do a better job as a city. And I know people are being hit up for money every time, every day, and it's a tough time of year, but we, we need to really raise some serious cash to get that feeling in shape. And I know you, you share those those concerns, and I'm not sure uh, how you go about doing that, but uh, we, we need a heck of a lot more than $145,000. Uh, the fence is certainly a piece of the uh, of the process, but I mean, if you look, the track needs to be re rehabbed. Stands are still in tough shape, uh, and the field itself uh, needs some work. So, uh, I just want to, you know, people out there have to know that it, everyone always calls it the jewel, and it is. But uh, we got to start putting our money where our mouths are, you know. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Council Caddy. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting the order? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you both. <coughs> Last item on the agenda, order 351-05, transfer $13,147.15 from Monument Park Reservation Preservation to West Fitchburg Streamline Trail. Steamline Trail. To get stronger glasses. This, this requested appropriation um, is from an account um, for which the project has been completed, and there's a balance of 13147 left in that account. Um, we are, because those funds are not encumbered by the CDBG program, uh, there were reimbursement funds from the state for the restoration of Ironman Park. Um, we are proposing that they be used as part of the city's required match for a $225,000 urban self-help grant, same program as the rail trail with, with the previous year. Um, because that program requires a 30% match on the city's part for, seven, for 70 cents on the dollar uh, being provided by the state. And to date, we are still shy of, by about uh, uh, $75,000 of the city's required match. Um, so we are, uh, attempting to put together as much piecemeal as we can the necessary match funds in order to be able to leverage that full grant and be able to proceed with uh, construction next spring of that trail. Council Hay. Question was answered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Move that 351-05 be adopted. Made and seconded to adopt order 351 05. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Any further? Councilor Joseph? Just a commentary, I guess. I, it's good to see that there's two programs, um, or actually three, that are preserving open space and utilizing open space for recreation here in Fitchburg. All three of those last three orders are. Um, going towards recreation both for youth and adults and I think that the city needs to make sure that we preserve that ability especially along the um, along the river and also you know right down in the center of town and also <laughs> along that trail between Lemonster and Fitchburg so these three orders that we did tonight were very uh, good for the city of Fitchburg to continue to offer recreational opportunities to the residents. Just following up on that, I think Council Joseph's right um, <coughs> on target talking about the recreational opportunities and um, people always talk about open space and people think open space just means space that's not used. Open space means space that the city should use for different programs and projects for the, for the residents and these are three good examples of that. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. <coughs>